What is up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we are in part four of overcoming my childhood trauma. Woo! Part four. Okay, let's dive right in and get into the nitty gritty. Now, this part is where we think it gets better and we want it to get better. But it's just the start of a deeper, deeper rooted childhood trauma. So I finally left the insane asylum, as we call it, a uh, case manager picked me up, drove me all the way back to Phoenix. And um, at the time, my mother was in an, uh, I think, a one bedroom apartment. And we slept in the living room, I believe. And I'm not sure though, because we did live upstairs, but I'm not sure if it was a one bedroom. I just remember it was apartments. Um, I forgot what the apartment's names was. And uh, I was nine, gonna be 10. I went back home on March 15th, 2008. And we moved in with her. My brother, Evie, he was with her already. And my other brother who was just born, she had a baby while me and my brother Evie were in the system. And then he got, the baby got taken away to his father's, which is my son, Manny now, you know, Manny. Um, so we had to wait to get him back um, a couple months. So because she needed a bigger apartment, you know, that's what the system said. So me and my brother Evie are back at the house. And now we're just visiting my little brother, Manny. And um, she had a boyfriend at the time who lived with us. And he, I think he got sent back to prison just a couple months of us being in that apartment. He went to prison and he had like a drug addiction problem. At that time is when I started getting into smoking. Now I wasn't like smoking like crazy things. I was just getting into like smoking and just in general, like a cigarette, um, a black. And uh, I don't think I was in, I was, I was smoking weed yet, but I was into like smoking cigarettes. And you know how kids do like smoke paper, you know, that, that's what we did. Um, so that's where my, that's where it started. My cousin, who was already into drugs lived with us who was the same age as me and he moved in with us and then he ended up moving back out moving with my nana and then um we lived in those apartments for i don't even know how long because it wasn't even that long and then we moved into other apartments across the street from the apartments before and that's where it just oh things got bad really fast so moving to those apartments, I'm going to school. At the time, I was going to Simpsons, and I was in, no, 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 no. I went to Cordova for fourth grade, and then I went to Simpsons for fifth grade. I believe that when, those, when we moved apartments, which was in fifth, I believe, or fourth, fifth, uh, we moved to those apartments, but it was during the summer. God, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like calculate everything back to back where it was. Let's start with just living in those apartments. Okay, living in those apartments. Um, this is around the time where my biological mother finally had gotten contact with my brother which it wasn't her it was her sisters who got in contact with my brother he was just turning i think 18 i believe um or he was 19 he was just he was he was a young adult and um he really wanted to see my mom so he had a boyfriend at the time and he had uh he asked if his boyfriend can come down here to live with us until he could come down here and so his boyfriend came down here first from la and he came down to live with us and 
but let's just say it didn't really turn out that great. Um, he would like talk crap about me and like just just treat me like crap. And um, at the time, my oh god, I hate talking about this. Um, my mother like would beat me like I would get beat over anything small. Like the abuse got worse the older that I got, like extremely worse. And I was the oldest at the time in the house. So I was the oldest um, in the house and um, she would hit me with belts, sandals, uh, smack me in the face with her hand. It depended on what it was that would trigger her. I don't know what would trigger her. It could be that I talked a little bit with an attitude or, you know, or be smart or whatever. And there would be times, like there was this time where she got mad at me and I, I ran out the door and she and I went downstairs and she got one of the guys who were in the apartment complex to beat me with a belt. And she told him, beat her with a belt. She won't listen. She's disrespectful. And he was like, okay. And I was like, really? You're really going to just let a random man just beat your daughter? And so there was a bunch of other guys and a bunch of other people watching as she was letting this man beat me with a belt. And um, I fought back, obviously. Like, I hit him with my scooter because I was not about to let no man just, random man just be hitting me with the belt. At this point, I was already tired of the abuse that was going on consistently. Um, this is around the time that I was R-word also. This is the time where... Um, I had got sent to my cousin's house. We went to a birthday party and it was her brother's birthday and, uh, my cousin's, it was, it was, it was my uncle's son's birthday and him and his, the, like, he had a daughter and a son. He also had an older daughter too, but the ones who were related to me were the two youngest, which was his daughter and his son. Um, they had took me to a room and we were like, just like laughing, da 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 da, you know, joking around. And then they started doing stuff with each other. And I said, what are you doing? And they were like, oh, you know, we just do this all the time. And to me, like, I was only like 10 or 11. I wasn't really sure about really what age I was, but I remember being like only 10 or, I wouldn't even think I was 11. I think I might've been 10 or 11. like, because we had just moved. So like, I might've been around 10. So I'm not really sure of that time frame though. Like I'm in between those two ages. And um, I'm, I'm barely discovering who I am sexually. Like, I don't even know what those stuff are, but I was beginning to get like, obviously curious as a kid does. And um, she was doing stuff with her brother. And this is my family, y'all. This is my family. This is how sick my family is. And for kids to be doing that with each other, uh, like a brother and sister, something had to be happening to them. At the time, I didn't think of that, obviously, because I was a kid and like blaming other kids for the, what they did to me. Um, so um, we, they forced me to do stuff with them and I like didn't want to, but I was like so scared. And they're like, no, 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 dude, like, you know, like, it's okay, it's okay. And I just felt so pressured into it. And I was like, okay. And so that night, I ended up spending the night, and I woke up to her hurting me, like hurting me. You know, I'm not going to get into like specific details because you know we are. This is very sensitive, sensitive information. Um, and I woke up and I was hurting, so I pushed her off of me, and I went to the bathroom and I saw that I was bleeding. So I just sat there and I sat there and I cried. I cried and I stood there for a while and then I went back to the room and like I moved like to the corner and like I just stood there and I was curled up scared and the next day like they still wanted to play the games of like doing stuff with each other and I didn't want to I just I just felt so trapped I was like I don't want to do it um I went home and the next day they 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 told their father that I was the one initiating things and so my uncle told my mother and I got beat so bad for what happened, even though I was R word that night. She beat me 
to the point where I had like belt marks on my back, on my arm, and like the belt marks, like they were so indented that it was bleeding. And like basically skin was peeled off my back. And that's how bad she hit me. And she was like, I'll never raise a daughter like this. I better not ever find out that you're gay. Or I'm gonna like, she's like, or I'm gonna like, she's like, I'm gonna kick you out. I'm gonna beat your ASS. And she was just like cussing me out. And I was like, I didn't do anything. I was like, I didn't do anything. It was them. And I never ever told her what really happened. I just said it was them. And it wasn't until like recently that I, you know, finally opened up about what really happened that night. And so that's what happened during that time around being 10. And then I went to, I would go to school with like belt marks as well, but nobody really, really knew. Um, I kept it to myself. I had anger issues at the time. I would fight. I would cuss teachers out. I was just a behavioral mess because I had so much things going on at home. You know, I'm taking care of my, I, at the time I wasn't taking care of my siblings because we had, she was home, she wasn't working and she was living off checks from us, like um, child support and all that and EBT. So she was doing pretty good financially. The apartments were really cheap that we were living in. So she just had a bunch of people living with us. So my brother moved in. Then after my brother and her, and his boyfriend moved out, um, uh, another girl moved in. I'm not going to name her name. And I called her like a sister. And then um, so her boyfriends, like she would switch boyfriends every other day. She would drink. At this time, she would drink. She was drinking with her friends. She would come drunk. Sometimes like she would, like, will show up high. Um, I was just in a place where like, it was just me and my brother and we were just sitting there and I, I would like obviously take care of him too, but I don't really remember of like taking care of him a lot. My mother was schizophrenic. So she would like have moments of, she would like, I don't know if she was having a stroke or not, but she would pretend to have strokes and like see ghosts and stuff like that. And it would scare me to pieces because she would constantly talk about it. And like as a kid, you don't talk to your kids about stuff like that, especially like like paranormal things. When a kid is like, you're like scaring your kid constantly. She would always constantly scare off my friends and talk about things that like were so like not for kids, you know? And so we moved into the next apartment's over because I think something happened with that apartment. I'm really not sure what really happened. Um, obviously more things I've been, I was, I was getting in fights in that apart in those apartments. Um, I was going out with my other friends. We moved into the other apartments and other things happened. When I was 11, um, I had made friends like, um, a friend who was a girl who had a brother and who had a couple other older brothers. And at the time we moved into apartments, I had a crush on her brother and the brother forced me to like do things with him and um i'm not going to be specific it wasn't like you know i'm just not going to be specific and so i did and just the sexual abuse just kept going and going this went on with different people for about like until i was like 17 was the last time it happened um so for for a good good portion of my life i was sexually molested abused and r word damn i didn't even realize that i don't ever really like to talk about like those topics because it really hits home um as i proceeded in those apartments at the time I found a puppy and I was so excited um, my mom ended up selling my puppy for five bucks because I couldn't take care of it I was 11 years old she kicked me out the house with my puppy because I didn't want to get rid of it and so I slept out on the stairs in a cardboard box 
with my puppy at 11 years old. It's crazy. And this time is when the fights would get worse and then she would like hit me and then, then pretend like nothing happened. Like come eat, you know, you hungry. Like I, I never really like know, would know like what was a good day, what was not, how would I ever know if we were gonna have a good day without the outburst. And then um, I finally met another friend and she was like a sister to me. We became really close, like really, really close. I would go to her house all the time and we got a, like built a great relationship. This time I had finally moved to a different apartment, um, a different apartments. I'm 12 now. And this is when the drugs start to come in. And I start going to Food City and doing beer runs, the behavioral, the, the drinking, the smoking, it got way worse. Um, and start like getting four locos. I would rob a uh, foot city and I would just put a bunch of four locos and B and J's in my backpack and go back to the apartments. And me and the kids would just like run in the park and I, I would drink with them and I would just get them all drunk. And minus some of these kids were my age or older, but I always had the alcohol. Me and them would sometimes go together and we would like, I would get the alcohol because they would be too scared to rob it and I would just be whatever. And so, yeah, and then sometimes the dude that was selling weed at the time, he would be like, yo, I would trade you alcohol for a bag of weed. And I was like, all right, like, let's do it. Um, so this is, this is when we're in uh, different apartments. My mom is finally pregnant with my sister. And um, the beatings, like I said, they just keep getting worse. This time I'm drunk. So when she's beating me, I'm not really feeling anything because I'm like drug, like I'm drunk off my ASS, you know? So I don't really care. And um, I just, I just, I was drunk most of my 12, 11, 12, late 11 year old and 12. And around this time, I think what went on? I would get bullied a lot by boys. And there was, there was, um, there was this guy who told my mother who lived with us and who told her that he had a dream that he r word me and then she forced him to tell me to my face so I would know that she wasn't lying. I just want to know what was going through her mind. Shouldn't she have kicked him out as soon as he said something like that? She waited till I got home from school to force him to sit down on the couch to tell me what he dreamed about me. You know how sick that is? How sick that is. Around this time too is when she would like beat me and just like throw me in the closet. or like um, lock me in the room and be like, you can stay here for three days or until the only time you can come out is to just eat and use the bathroom. And I would usually like escape through the window. I would never really stay in my room. Like I just didn't care. I didn't care if I kept getting beat anymore. The whoopings weren't working. I just, I didn't want to be home. I didn't want to be sober. I didn't want to feel like everything just kept crumbling down. And so I would get drunk. I would go to my friend's house wasted. And I would knock on her window and I'd be like, can I come in? And she's like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm drunk, I can't go home. And she'd be like, okay. And she'll open her window and she would just like, give me a pillow and blanket. And she was like, you can sleep on this side. And I was like, thank you. She's like, you're welcome, good night. I'm going back to bed. And she would just let me stay there. Like she was such a great friend growing up. She was really a friend that I really needed growing up until things turned, took a hard self, you know? Um, like I said, I kept drinking. And um, eventually I started doing more things, especially with, um, with boys. I just felt so peer pressured. I really did. I just, 
at this point, I just felt like my body didn't belong to me. It wasn't mine. And anybody could have it. You ever get to a point after so much sexual abuse that you just feel like you don't own your own body and everybody else owns it? That was that part of feeling that way that everybody else had access to me, but I couldn't control it was so hard to deal with. As I got older, from like, I think 12 to like 15, my friend who was a sister to me, her brother started also molesting me while I was sleeping and would touch me and touch my body. Um, and he would constantly walk in her room or in the living room and proceed to touch me, whether it be my breast, my thighs, any part that he wanted. And I would move every time I would wake up because I would feel his hands. And then he would like run off as soon as I started waking up. He would run off and I would see him. I would keep my eyes like closed, but I, I would like peek to see him feeling on me. And I didn't say anything until I got older. Um, by the time I was like 13, I was selling weed. Um, and I was still drinking. I was still robbing Foot City. We lived in another apartment. And um, I just kept doing what I was doing. Eventually, I ended up in juvie by 15. I started uh, by like 14, 13, 13, I was in juvie and uh, twice, I believe. And 14, I was in juvie or three times. I don't really remember. I was drugged up most of the time that I was a teenager between like 11, 12 to like 15, 16 years old. I would drink all the time, smoke all the time. It was just constant. Nobody really knew because I did it like in the background. So some people knew at my school, some people didn't. Uh, and then I had like this like awakening area of my life. Uh, so it was like all mixed up. So let's get back to where we were at. I'm, let's say I'm 13 now or 12, 13. I'm 13 now. We live in another apartment. I'm done selling weed i'm still drinking but we move into a family friends and that's when i go to juvie and i'm at i'm at a behavioral school now i'm at aces because i've been kicked out of my schools my behavioral school my eighth grade and um i finally started doing better with my schooling i finally started getting like my act together because i don't want to keep doing this and the route that i was going was going down towards a bad route um, this is where like the responsibility came back on me around being around 12 and 13. Um, when I was 12, I would go to where is it? I like 12 or 13. I think it was 13. When I was 13, me and my brother would go to Foot City in the back of Foot City because my mom would have no lights. We would be out of food and I would get food from the dumpster. You know how like they would like throw away fresh donuts every night because they had to make sure they had a fresh ones in the morning when they would deliver. So we would grab like the donuts from the dumpster because we were hungry. So me and my brother, we would go do that. And then um, we would panhandle in front of Foot City and we would ask for like quarters or a dollar like, can we have a quarter? Me and my two younger brothers, uh, Destiny's, she was still a baby, so she wasn't old enough yet. And it was my brother was, I think, three. My other brother was eight, and I was 13. And we would panhandle, and I would teach them how to panhandle, like, just ask them for a quarter. I would have the youngest one with me and the other one, and we would always ask, hey, can we have a dollar? Like, we're just trying to get lights on the on the house. And I would, I, once we saved up a bunch of money, I would put like five or ten dollars on the SRP card 
because we were in front of the city and that's why the SRP box and I would put it and then any money, extra money I would get me and my brothers a, a like a bacon cheeseburger which was like a dollar um, each and I would get us all like that until we had enough money and then I would feed us and that was our life for a good old year of like us panhandling I would constantly be panhandling or I would steal people's bikes if your bike was ever missing in Phoenix it was probably one of us I'm just I'm just saying like I was a kid on them and I did steal a lot I stole from Walmart I would steal bikes and that's some, I think, from people's houses, that's the worst that I got is me stealing bikes from uh, people's houses at a very young age because I had to steal to survive. And that's what I felt like in order to survive, I had to steal. And that was my way of surviving. <sighs> it was a very sad time. And so as I kept Getting older, eventually I started going to people's houses to see if they wanted their lawn mowed or anything like that. And so we would do that. We did that when I was like 12 to 11, 12. I, would, I did that when I was 11, 12 as well to get money and stuff like that for the house. I would, and uh, we're going to end it here. We're going to end it when I get into high school. It's my freshman year of high school. And we're going to just end it right there. Um, 14 all that stuff i've already happened and uh still more stuff happens but we're gonna end it here because i don't like getting into much specifics of how bad the abuse was when it comes to physicality because she did beat me she did my my mother during the time she would drag me by the hair she would beat me she would kick me in the face she would kick me in my body she would beat me with a belt she would beat me with a switch a pot a pan hit my head against the wall and call me names she would say i was trash i wasn't anything i will never be anything and uh so physical emotional and mental abuse all in one within those couple years of being back with her and cps did get called multiple times and i would constantly lie because i didn't want to get taken again so it's freshman year we're going to go to part five so stay tuned thank you so much for watching and if this triggered you i am so sorry um, if you have any experiences like this, please comment below. I want people to know that they're not alone and everybody has their own trauma and we all go through some really bad, bad trauma, but we cannot let our trauma define us and we have to heal and recover from this. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in part five. Peace.